Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today we'll have another review and that review is of another big surprise of 2024 and that was Long Live Evil by Sarah Rees Brennan which is the first book in the I think it's Time of Iron series which is a kind of isekai type story. So why was this a surprise to me? It wasn't necessarily a surprise because I thought I wouldn't like this story. I thought I would enjoy it. I thought it would be like a fun romp kind of along the 3, 3.5 star rating. Maybe 3.75 star. I honestly didn't even necessarily expect to give it 4 stars. I think I ended up giving it 4.5 or 4.75 stars. I loved and adored this. It was so good. Literally so good. And so yeah, before we talk about what's good about it, let me tell you what this is about. As I said, it's a kind of isekai portal fantasy type story. We follow our main character, Ray, who currently is dealing with stage four cancer, which by the way is an own voices depiction. The author herself defeated cancer. I believe it's defeated. Um, I'm not sure because it doesn't say in the end if it was like if she's in remission right now or if she's passed, but it does say surviving stage four cancer. So yeah. We'll get to that later. So Ray is surviving stage four can cancer and she's currently in hospital and she's fighting with her little sister about their common favorite book series. For Ray, it's like she loves the later books. She never truly read the first book for some reason. She loves, I think, the theater or the movie or something. There was some adaptation or another, but she mostly also loves the story because of the like connection that she has forged with her sister through the story as well. And so she's discussing with her sister in the hospital about the story. Visiting times are over. And once visiting times are over, a mysterious woman comes to Ray and tells her that in her favorite series, there's this flower that can defeat death, which Ray knows. And she is offered the option to enter this book series and given a year to get the flower, come back, take the flower, and it would heal her. She'd survive cancer. And so Ray takes the chance and <laughs> she's transported into the story but into the body of the main villainess of the story who at the point of the plot when Ray is being put into the story is about to be executed on the next day. And so Ray's like, well shit, we're gonna have to do something about this and you know, shenanigans ensue. So mostly what this book is, is it's pretty light-hearted, it's pretty surface level, it's very fun, it's playing with tropes. However, there's also a lot of more emotionally deep undertones within the story, but before I get to those and before I get to everything that I liked, let me tell you about some stuff that I didn't like. The first of those things is the exposition. Not gonna lie, the exposition in the story was kind of terrible. There were a lot of things, like we have different POV characters, so aside from Rey, we have two more POV characters. And with Rey, the terrible exposition kind of made sense, the very clunky exposition, because there were a bunch of moments where like Rey is reminding herself how things worked within the story and like about dynamics and world building and a lot of the world building was done like that. However, with the characters that were from the book and should be expected to know how everything works, the exposition still worked very similarly. And so it just kind of, you know, a character is remembering this right now, not because it feels kind of very, you know, 
fluent or very natural to where the story is going right now but she's remembering this right now because we as the reader need to know this relationship of this character with this other character or something along those lines so yeah not gonna lie um wasn't the biggest fan of that <laughs> it's, it's I would say it's up there with some of the worst exposition that I've read um, so that really tells you how much I love the rest of the book because I'm a big exposition nerd like I love well done exposition the other thing that I kind of didn't like that much is how vague like the concept of what the series was that Ray was transported into and I do think however that it was at least partially on purpose and because it fit with the story. First of all it was because Ray, because of cancer and because of chemo had a lot of troubles with memories. So she along with like not paying proper attention to the plot of book one she just had trouble remembering a lot of what happened and more so knew like the rough story. Additionally, I think it also had to do with how the twist in the like end of the book worked, why we were not given a lot of information. So I think it was warranted that it felt kind of confusing of like what exactly like was the series that she's moving into. However, every now and again, I would have loved a bit more of a clear framing let's put it like that i don't know if it makes sense but yeah it, it's the best i can do right now so now let's go um into this book so uh i was done for after the first one or two chapters not gonna lie uh, it's why i didn't mind the bad exposition I was already in love with the book from the first two chapters and I hadn't known, I didn't know that Sarah Reese Brennan had cancer also, but I read the first chapter and I was like, this author at least very thoroughly sat down with someone who had cancer because shit felt too real. And I, for some reason, I, I only knew that it was an isekai of a girl who ends up in the body of a villain but I didn't know that she had cancer so I was kind of surprised by that and for those of you who don't know who are here just you know as a one-off or because I haven't talked about it in a while a few years ago I had cancer I luckily didn't have stage four I had stage one cancer so I was never at a point where I really really worried about my life because I was told from the very beginning my type of cancer was very treatable um, so I didn't like I can't say that I didn't connect to that part of the fearing for your life because even if you're told it's treatable because of how cancer is being depicted in you know media and because of how like it's talked about a lot of times you still worry in the end and it's still like kind of there but just everything everything from how it was described how her friends started treating her how chemo itself was described how her family looks at her it legit just too real it was so close and a book that I expected to like be mostly humorous and the humor in this absolutely worked for me got me to tear up within the first few pages which is not easy to do like it really isn't and I'm just gonna try and see if I can find because I know that I sent a quote to Scylla at some point of the book where I was like uh yeah this this is pretty much it exactly like a hundred pages into the book already but it's when I decided to actually look up the author bio because at that point I was like no this is not someone who has talked to someone else. This is someone who has gone through it herself. Um, 
Chemotherapy was poison intended to kill your disease before it killed you. When poison was injected into your veins, it felt cold, as though your blood was filtered through a slushy machine. Iced blood moved sluggishly through your body, pervading the whole system. Nobody had ever tried to save Ray from poison before. She hadn't known she wished someone would. It's those things where sometimes we connect to things in books and it's so incredibly important to us. And I don't know how obvious it might be to people who haven't like gone through chemo. I think it's like that a lot of times with representation or with our own voices. But Ray having gone through chemo is there throughout the entire book. Even when you don't think it's there in the way she reacts, in the way she thinks, in the way she talks to people, it's just always there. And sometimes it's very obvious, sometimes it's not at all. And so, yeah, I was already fully on board with the book before I had even properly started it, not gonna lie and I need to change my battery. Now that we have the kind of more emotionally heavy stuff out of the way, let's get into the actually fun bit. So first of all, I love the relationships in this book. Uh, Ray and Ki are so cute. They had me giggling, kicking up my feet. I loved it. The second thing was, there's another romance that we follow quite a lot between someone uh, called The Last Hope, uh, Marius, and someone else called The Golden Cobra. And we only get POVs from Marius' point of view, and Marius is very much a, you know, staunch, honorable character type archetype. And The Cobra is the owner of a bordel. He's a pimp essentially. And Marius, in his internal monologue, always being like, he's up to something, I hate him, I need to pay attention to him, while being so obviously obsessed with him, is just... It's peak. I love it. I adore it. It's amazing. No notes. Gorgeous. And then Ray and Key are the other thing, which is also so funny because Ray doesn't necessarily 100% remember who Key was in the story. She just like remembers vaguely that he falls in love with the female main character of the story, Leah. And so she doesn't get that he like is also kind of obsessed with her and constantly tries to push him towards Leah and be like, oh, this is the moment where he fell in love with her and it, it's just, it's very cute, it's very adorable. There's a lot of um, miscommunication but in the best way possible. So I love the relationships and that's something that I don't necessarily often say where I'm like, the romances had me kicking up my feet and giggling. Literally. Literally. And there was a lot of like, if you touch her you'll die type thing. Like. The way this book, and that's something that I absolutely love when books just lean into tropes, but in a very conscious, kind of self-deprecating way. And that's definitely something that this book did. Absolutely love that. The other thing that I also, I just love the characters in general. I didn't really care about Emma that much, but she was a character who didn't appear that much as well. Um, so, yeah, love the characters, love the relationships, and I really enjoyed the twist at the end, and I didn't really see it coming that much, to be honest. I thought it was like a nice little well-done twist that was actually a twist and, you know, was a surprise, and like, at the same time, didn't come out of nowhere. That type of thing, I really enjoyed it and I need the second book like right now and it's so annoying because I don't even see a second book on Goodreads or anywhere yet so it's really sad but yeah I think that's all that I have to say already. I love the humor in this. I think this is definitely a type of book where if you don't like the humor you won't like it but as I said it's kind of very self-deprecating humor and also something that I enjoyed is that like 
the fantasy that this is making fun of isn't necessarily modern fantasy but very like 80s type fantasy where you have maybe even 90s or early 2000s and Rey is very much in the body of this like <laughs> um, villainous seductress and she 100% plays it up to a T and enjoys doing that so much. She enjoys leaning into being the villain of the story so much, even though she isn't the villain necessarily because she's a very caring character. And it's, it's beautiful. I love it. It's, I just, I just really enjoyed it. I just really enjoyed it. And if you don't connect with the cancer stuff and if this isn't the humor for you, then I don't think you're gonna enjoy this book. But if the humor is something that you like and if you connect to, it doesn't have to be the cancer part to be honest, I really hope it won't be the cancer part for you, not gonna lie, um, because you know, it's not great having cancer. If there's something that you can connect to in this book, I think you'll love it. So it's really hard for me to like say that this is a book that I recommend because I don't think it's a badly written book even if it has some things that are kind of badly done in it but also I don't think it's a book that everyone will like. Tell me in the comments down below if you read this book would you recommend it? Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? If you enjoyed this video maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing all the links to my social media as well as to my book club of queens which is in Valkyries where we read one adult fantasy book written by a woman or gender queer person per month will be left linked down below so go and check those out and I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye!